In this series of videos, we're building a beginner's model railroad on IKEA tables using pre-cut plywood and pillars available as a kit. Track system of your choice. The result is a model railroad with two stations, a harbor with connection to a ferry boat. The layout also features a switching yard, which handles the freight car coming from the two industries. And welcome to another episode in this series of videos where we're building a model railroad from ground up. And this model railroad is uh, kind of a for a beginner's uh, layout for like a family or if it's your first layout, then this is a, a good start. Uh, in this uh, episode we will assemble uh, trees to the layout and also the houses, the structures we built in a previous tutorial. The, the trees will uh, mainly be ready-made trees but also show you a bit what you can do with those to make them look more realistic. Uh, if you want to craft your own trees, which I definitely recommend, uh, I have a number of tutorials on my channel. Look under the, the topic um, landscape and you will find uh, almost a, a video tutorial for every kind of tree there is out there. So uh, no more time to wait, let's get to it. Beside from the laser cut kits of houses I built, mainly the industries on this layout and the station, I also built these uh, plastic kits. You can also buy them ready made on eBay sometimes. But to avoid them looking too shiny and uh, unrealistic, we need to make a few modifications. And one of the first things I do is to tear off the ground piece of most of the buildings. Uh, it's uh, very useful when you're building the house, but once you're ready, you can remove it like this. Simply because it's very hard to implement this into a landscape and making it look realistic. Coming back to the first house, it has a kind of patio around and that shouldn't be removed. It uh, looks good and uh, it's uh, a kind of a part of the structure. So we're keeping that. Instead, we will weather it uh, somewhat. For this, I'm using uh, acrylic white, a portion of burnt umber brown and a drop of black. So I'm mixing this uh, and it should be kind of gray, warm gray. And then add half water. So one part color and one part water and paint the entire patio. And I use the same uh, paint mix for the house foundation. Now, now we're gonna do something about that roof too. So I'm mixing here black with a tiny portion of brown. The purpose with the brown is to give the black a bit warmer tone. So once the previous layer of gray has dried, I apply this uh, well black brown wash and let it float into the edges between the tiles and also the stones in the foundation. Then leave it to dry a few minutes, then wipe all of the surface paint off with a cotton swab. Now use the same black brown uh, wash on the roof and same thing with a piece of uh, paper. I wipe most of it off so the black wash only stays in between the tiles. I basically use same process for all of the three houses I've made for this layout from plastic kits. I will now try some, try some different uh, placement of these uh, three houses. It's always a bit of a guessing game when you're buying the houses what they will actually look like on the layout once you get them there. You can make mock-ups of uh, cardboard, but I didn't do that this time. It uh, turned out that uh, the third house was maybe one house too many. So instead I'm going for these two and uh, maybe not this is the ideal direction. So I switch them here instead. Look at the houses from different angles before you make your mind up where you want that exact placement. Then I draw the outline contour on the landscape surface. And once I've done that, we're gonna start doing the driveways. 
I started out here with um, PVA glue and uh, chinsilla sand, but once in place I didn't think it was a good match really, so I went instead for a, a look which more matches the outside road, which means I plastered these areas, painted them grey using the same structural paint from Noch and uh, also weather them using the same pastel chalk powders. But we're gonna have some hinges. I'm using this uh, Noch 21512, and they're really easy. Just cut them to length and glue them in place. Now it's time to glue the other buildings in place. Here comes the warehouse down in the harbor. I glue that in place using fast set glue. Then so add some decorations around like a flower pot and also some people working there this is a kit from Noch 15038 with um, workers yeah they also need somewhere to throw away the garbage and uh, there is another kit for that 14825 and I glue that in place on the rear side here in the evening it will get all dark. To avoid that I'm also assembling a street light here in the edge of the concrete or asphalt. Glue it in place using facet glue and connect it to the connector socket we have in our front of the layout. Same thing with the street lights along the main street up by the station. I checked the backdrop for road markings and street signs, but there were none. So I decided to go for just uh, drawing parking spots by the station. So there will be a small parking lot there. For this, I cut my own uh, template from a piece of cardboard, which was left over after I built the laser cut kit. And I use a sponge to make the lines. They are far from perfect, but I can tell you that um, the lines in real life, unless they're absolutely recently painted, are not perfect either. So all you need to do now is to add pastel chalk powder using a makeup sponge. Then as the last thing before getting started with the trees is to glue figures in place. Now, the trees serve several different functions on the layout, I think. One is to create a forced perspective, so therefore I have large trees up front, which are very well detailed, and in the rear, less detailed trees. This uh, layout, I'm kind of planning to use ready-made trees. These can be bought uh, kind of cheaply, like uh, 2 euro 20, 2 euro 50 which is about uh, three dollars each but they need to be trimmed somewhat because they look a bit too manufactured i think so all you need to do is to cut away some of the branches um, randomly over the entire tree and then mist some brown paint and you see here the difference between the one from the package to the right and the one we modified slightly Big difference with a minimum of time investment. And we're gonna glue a lot of these. I counted to a total of 80 of these evergreens. And I glued them in place using fast set glue. Now this is uh, a gel and to go with that I use an accelerator which accelerates the curing process. So I put a drop of gel where I want my tree. I spray a bit of accelerator on the foot of the evergreen and then it stays in place. A trick when planting trees is to plant them in groups with odd numbers like three or five. Also cut some real short to get some variance. Leave room for clearances where you can arrange small scenes like this with the pigs and the hunting tower. Check with camera angles if you're interested in later taking photos so any trees doesn't block the view. Here's another scene with a hiker and a hiker's cabin. 
For the deciduous trees, I really recommend crafting a few large trees and place them in the front of your layout. If you don't want to craft, you can buy one of the more exclusive trees and you don't need all that many. Maybe two or three is enough. For the rest, you can use this type of tree. This is also two euro fifty. All you need to do is to break off that uh, foot and don't be afraid to shape the tree after the place you will put it. So in this, I'm making it uh, kind of a half of the foliage and I'm placing it next to this uh, mountain side here, this rock side. So then it kind of blends in better. Look here, here I've used uh, the left tree to cover the road bend. So you can't really see where the road ends. Trees are also perfect as dividers between different scenes. So plant trees along the railway lines where you want to divide it into different scenes and then trim the trees around it. Add trees until you're happy with the appearance of your landscape. In total, I glued 70 evergreens in place and about 40 deciduous trees. Three of them were kind of parade trees, which I placed up front. And that concluded the basic detailing of this layout. So in the next video, we will take the tour around. I hope you liked this uh, video. If you did, please help others to find it by giving it a thumbs up. Did you know that this channel is uh, totally dependent on the support from viewers like you? So if you want to be one of the good guys, get over to Patreon, set up a support account there from, you know, like one or two dollars per month or make a one-off donation using the PayPal dialog found in the video description below. And don't forget to subscribe and enable that little bell and you will get a notification once next video gets published. Until that happens, see ya! <laughs>